In this video, we're going to talk about how to make a uh, similar tank to the Games Workshop Rhino. And I'm actually going to use it for terrain. After I make it, I'm going to uh, make it wrecked and then use it for game terrain. But really, you could use it uh, for Games of Warhammer if you wanted or uh, whatever. Uh, we're going to use this card stock it's uh about this thick you ordered it on amazon uh it's really handy it's just kind of they use this for uh making uh scrapbooking it's a uh, chipboard paper and uh, a ruler and some scissors and exacto knife so first thing you need to do is measure up the rhino as you can see here I uh, measured everything out here and I'm gonna just start making it in pieces so this side this is the bottom uh, three and five eighths these lines are one quarter inch each and do not cut them off I'm gonna perforate these edges and bend them up so I'll come back to you it's one and three-fourths inch wide I'll come back to you once I have this cut out and all right, so I cut out the bottom template. I cut out the bottom board. This is as what I was talking about. The, these parts are fold up like this. And it's gonna be the front of the rhino like this. So the next part is the, the top. I am going to cut out this whole thing. Uh, this is one and three eighths. This is three and five eighths. It's the same width as the bottom, one and three fours. This is the front. It's gonna connect to the curl part. Okay, I got the top glued to the bottom. The next part is the sides. So I need two of them. It's three and five eighths top, three and five eighths bottom. And then it's got the slant, and I just kind of eyeballed the slant. Uh, it's this part right here, looking at the the rhino, but I'm going to do this next. You need two two of these pieces. So I'm going to cut out two of these. I'm going to glue them on the sides, and then I'll come back and show you the progress. Okay, I got the the body of this glued together. There's a little overhang at the back, uh, and sometimes this happens as you make things. You mismeasure or whatever. So I'm just going to cut this piece off, and then I'm going to make the, the side parts for the tread, which uh, will be these uh, parts right here, this this one right here, and this one. I need four of these shapes cut out. So the, the top is two and five eighths, the side one and three eighths, three eighths, one half, three and a half, three eighths, and all around. Go ahead and pause that and you'll need four of these. And then you'll need two of these track covers uh, cut out. So this is one half inch thick, one and three eighths here, two and five eighths, and then one inch. And again, this will cover these four pieces. You need two for each side. It's this part right here. We're making these parts now. Oh, so I got these two side piece is done and they're going to get glued on there like so but before you do that I wanted to remind you to trace them uh, onto the chipboard because you have to make panels a little bit bigger when we're doing detail work we want to make this part here and this uh, top part so even though you can see these seams they're going to cover them up by extra armor so you got to make sure that you trace this before you glue it on. So I'm going to glue these on. Alright guys, I'm going to start making the tread. I cut this long strip out. It's half an inch wide. And then every two eighths, or I guess that would be one fourth. Every one fourth, I went through and I put a mark. And then I'm going to uh, bend it which you do this with the knife. Uh, you just barely, you don't cut through, so it folds nice. 
and you'll get this cool track effect. I don't know if I'll need one or two, but it will be enough to go around the bottom. Now for uh, tread detail, you can see these treads are rough. I use this granny netting and I cut out a strip the same size. And then after I perforate it and bend it, every other tread will get a piece of this mesh between it. And I did it on my other uh, terrain tank. It turns out really cool. Okay guys, so before we make the treads, I tried putting the treads on uh, just using this. It didn't look right. So now I'm gonna make uh, these wheels here so the, the profile of this sits up a little higher. So I got these uh, buttons from uh, Walmart and they're like two bucks and you get a whole bunch. And it's gonna work best if you glue two of them together and you need seven per side. I counted the wheels here. So I'm gonna glue two of them together. I'm gonna attach them under here and then I'm gonna redo the tread. So I'll come back when I have one side done and show you how it looks. Okay, so I finished the one side track. It's looking pretty good. You get a good effect with that uh, granny mesh. Uh, skip every other tread. And it, it turns out looking pretty good. That one got a little crooked. Won't really, you won't really be able to notice when, once you spray paint it. Profile's a little better now. Matches the actual one a lot better. So I'm going to do the other side and then we'll come back and work on the side panels. Okay, I got the profile right now. Got both the tracks on. Cut out the two sides from earlier. I made sure I labeled them so they could fit on there good. You got to remember that you need to cut out a door. Make sure you save it because we're going to make sure we uh, reattach it for this door. You have to cut out a door and you have to cut out these side pieces. Okay, we're just making this side, then we'll make the, the tops and the bottoms next. But I'm gonna cut this out and then trace it on the other one so they're the same. Uh, glue them on, come back, I'll show you when I'm done. Okay, details are coming along. I got these two sides done. Save the panels. I'm going to put on the doors, but you have to cut these down a little bit so they uh, show the the crack in there. So they can just fit in there, just snug, and you want to leave a little gap so when you're painting you can see the gap. And then I'm going to put on uh, these fender parts, and I'm just going to use scrap pieces that I have. And again, if you look right here, then you line it up and you just go right across right there, put one right there, put one right there, put one right here, and then you have a long one running across that sits in here. And it just kind of closes this up and makes it cleaner. Okay, I've finished all the, the tops. Coating this. Turned out pretty good. I'm gonna do the other side, there's the door. Turned out pretty good. It's coming along well. I'll do the other side and come back and tell you what's next. Okay, I got the basic chassis done. I cut out this back door. I think I'm going to leave it open. I'm going to uh, decorate it with some granny mesh inside. And I'm going to make a little uh, pattern here with the granny netting to make some like metal grating here. I'll leave that back hatch open probably and then I'm going to make this front little fender which if you don't have a rhino handy it's about 3 8 high and about an inch and a half long I'm talking about this little slit here. And I'm going to make this part and this back 
door, which that's about two by one and a half. Okay guys, there it is. All done. I just use buttons for these top portholes. I cut this door, uh, made it jagged, I put a piece here for the buttons to sit on. I did the uh, inside here with some granny mesh and if you were going to use this for a rhino at this point you would just uh, paint it prime it and paint it it's pretty close it got a little wide I didn't take into account the thickness of the cardboard otherwise it would have been closer but it's still less than a half inch uh, wider than this original uh, Rhino, so that's good. Now my next step is to draw some battle damage. And when I do battle damage for terrain tanks, I like to think of a scenario. So I think the scenario is gonna be that a Laz cannon or a Melta hit it right here. I'm gonna have most of this side burnt and melted with a few other like pot, hot, pot shots taken and then the guys bailed out the back and I'm gonna put it on a uh, base but I'll come back when the when I got the battle damage drawn on this okay this is probably the hardest part of this whole process we just made this great tank but now we need to cut it up so I drew where the damage will be then I get my trusty exacto knife and I, I'm gonna cut it out real jagged and then after I cut it out, I'm going to just get some, uh, I'm going to save some of this scrap. I'm going to get some uh, sprue plastic, which if you guys have been doing Warhammer for a while, you probably have a lot of these around, just this sprue. I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to glue in some parts to make it look jaggedy. I'm going to glue in some sprues. Okay, so I did up this uh, battle damage right now. It's just like I use hot glue to sort of simulate that melting. And I am still gonna burn these a little bit, but then also I added some bullet holes. And I go through this, I use a soldering iron and I poke the center and then I kind of burn around the edges with the soldering iron. It creates a cool effect, so. Uh, you could still probably cut these out. And I was just going to do the one uh, damage where either a Laz cannon or a, a Melta hit this tank. But then uh, tanks now have 10 wounds. So even on the best case scenario, they wouldn't be able to take out this Rhino. They'd only be able to do six wounds. So then I s thought maybe I should add a couple more. So I'm going to melt some of these with a lighter. I'm gonna solder that and then I'll come back and show you that. Okay, I've finished all the battle damage. So you can see the, the soldering iron. And I just poke a hole with the soldering iron and then I just use the side and burn these sides. And it turns out pretty cool. I've used this uh, technique before. I added some textures here with the soldering iron on the glue. And then, now I'm going to make the base. I got the best part about having a, the making cool terrain is having a good idea. So I have this berserker, and this is going to be uh, red. I have two uh, Space Marine armies, Ultramarines, and corn. So I'm gonna. I made a blown up land raider for my Ultramarine. So this blown up right now is going to be for my corn, and I'm going to use this chipboard for the base. Um, I've used foam board. Uh, it kind of has a cool effect, but I want this a little flatter so it lays flat. So I'm going to cut out an interesting shape and I'll probably make it kind of uh, oval. But it's going to be something like this. Uh, this Berserker Rhino got blown up. I'm going to uh, incorporate this dice. I'm going to uh, blend it in so it shows the one. And then I'll probably use this. Um, just to give it make it like a sewer grade or something and then i'm going to use this uh this wire to make some texture so i'm going to use this clay to put a thin layer of of basing on all this and and tie it all in 
And here we are, the base is done. As you can see, I have that berserker tripping over the one. I saw this dice down. Uh, when we paint it up, right now it kind of looks silly, but when we paint it up, it should blend in well. It's just a little nod to when you, the vehicle gets blown up. If you roll a one, your, your guy dies. And the saying is like he twisted an ankle on the way out. So here's that berserker fleeing. He twisted his ankle. Now he's dead. I textured all this uh, base just using that that little net. And again, right now it doesn't look like much, but when you paint it up, that texture really does look cool. Uh, this is, I'm saying, is a sewer grate. Right? This is like the top of like a seasoning thing, but just to break up the, the texture. So I'm gonna let this dry and then I'll black bomb it. And this is the part I really get excited about is the black bombing. That's where it really uh, starts to look like a cohesive piece. Okay, here's the black bombed finished product here. Here's the dead guy. And like you said, I really like this step. So it finally feels like it's almost done. Uh, I'm going to paint it. These are the colors I'm going to use. All these I got from Walmart. This paint was probably five bucks. I've used it a ton. I got some silver. I got some gray, I got some red, I got some orange, I got some black, I got some white, and I got some copper. Those are the colors I'm going to use. I'm going to mix them on this tray, mix in some white to lighten it up, and I'll come back and do one last video, show you the final product. Oh, one more thing too. I used this wash I made. It says black paint and water. So way cheaper than using Games Workshop paint or anything like that. So guys, here is the final painted up battle damaged rhino. Thanks if you stuck through the whole thing. Maybe this could have been a little blacker. That always happens. Uh, as you go, you're like, oh man, I could have done this, I could have done that, but overall I'm pretty happy with it. And again, it only costed me a couple bucks in materials. Uh, this guy was a eBay save. I want to say I got 10 berserkers for like under 10 bucks because they were just in rough shape. And I painted some up and I used some for terrain. But again, here he is, tripping over the one. This is the... The cool thing about terrain, it should always tell a story. If you made it till the end, thanks for being patient. Sorry it wasn't shorter. Good luck making your own uh, terrain. But it turned out pretty good. It matches my, my new game mat uh, pretty well. As you can see, it blends in decently to this. And here's some berserkers utilizing this as as cover. Here's a berserker. Here's a berserker. And when I paint my terrain, I paint it uh, a little below what I paint my uh, miniatures. Again, you know, I have kids, so here's a bloodthirster. You know, I don't want it, the terrain to be so well painted it mis mismatches the army and it detracts so it's painted just enough to blend in but thanks for watching happy war gaming and keep those ideas flowing for your own terrain ideas are what make cool terrain pieces and again could you buy a rhino online and do this yeah probably probably costs you probably triple what I paid. Again, this is probably under five bucks of things. Alright, see you next time.